Okay, hi brothers and sisters, this is Eric. Thank you for joining me again. <sighs> because I just did a video about two hours ago. So I was having my dinner of some noodle soup. And while I was eating, I was suddenly, I, I was uh, thinking about, you know, some of the brothers and sisters around the world who may be going through very little food or they may be close to starvation, not knowing where the next meal is going to come from. And... Um, I was then suddenly reminded of the 153 fishes. So one thought led to another, and I believe that the Holy Spirit wants me to share this message. Okay. I will drop, there's a, there are two or three bombshells that I want to drop at the end of the video. Okay, but let me just sort of uh, go through what happened when Simon Peter caught 153 fishes. Now, before he caught 153 fishes, Jesus actually asked him, Do you have any meat? Okay? Now, that was Jesus speaking in his pre-resurrected form before he went to the cross. Now, again, Jesus asked the same question, Do you have any meat? In his resurrected form when he appeared before his disciples. Now, I believe, right, the reason why Jesus asked the same question, Do you have any meat? Is that Jesus was trying to remind them that he is the sustainer. He is their sustainer. He is the Jehovah uh, Jireh. That without him, they would never have caught the fishes. So that, so when Jesus asked them for meat, some meat, but in his resurrected form, but the disciples gave him fish, right? So Jesus was trying to tell them, can you feed me with what I have already given you? All right? So, here are three bombshells that I want to drop, okay? Now, the first one is that as soon as they came to land, okay, sorry, hold on. And after they, after Simon Peter caught 153 fishes, the next verse goes on to say, Jesus say unto them, come and dine. And none of the disciples there, there ask him, who, who art thou? Now, when Jesus say, come and dine, does it not remind you of the marriage supper of the Lamb? Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The second bombshell was that, okay, so it gets even better, all right? When you go to verse 8, right? Initially, it was just, uh, you know, uh, Simon Peter um, speaking with Jesus. And in verse 8, it says, And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land. Okay, so, I believe that this is actually a parallel to how the body of Christ will be gathered together, right? right? It says, and the other disciples came in a little ship. So it started off with a conversation between Jesus and Simon Peter, and then it progressed to other disciples who came in a little ship to join them, signifying the uh, body of Christ. Now the, the, the third now, now the third parallel that I can think of, alright, is this, alright? I mean this is this is pretty huge to me and I was a bit stunned when I when, when this revelation came. Because the hundred and fifty three fishes that Peter caught, Simon Peter caught, probably signifies the end of hunger. Now if you are hungry right now, then your hunger will come to an end in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, which was the video that I just did. Do you see the connection between 153 fishes and 1 Thessalonians 5.3? So it's God trying to say that, you know, whatever uh, hunger that you're going through, whatever struggles, whatever starvation, and that is all going to come to an end with the 153 fishes at the point of rapture in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. I just found that really interesting and I had to share this with all of you. So if you are starving, if you are hungry, or if you are going through a lot of problems, all right, maybe that hunger will come to an end, you know, as... 
you know, just just like the hundred and fifty three fishes that uh, Simon Peter caught, which so happens to be one Thessalonians five three, right? <laughs> I mean, I I don't I don't think that this is a coincidence. I'm very encouraged by this because many of the brothers and sisters out there are struggling. Okay, so think about it: one hundred and fifty three fishes with one Thessalonians five three. Because it is at the point of the rapture in 1 Thessalonians 5.3 that we will go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And this is exactly what verse 12 says. And Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. So not only will you be, no, no longer will you be starving, but you will, not only will you not be starving, you will actually be at, you'll be feasting. You will not be starving, but you'll be feasting. And because you will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb, which was probably why Jesus said, Come and dine. And then in verse 8, and all the other disciples came in a little ship. So it signifies the gathering, the collective gathering of uh, the entire body of Christ. Wow. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> it's just amazing, right? The Word of God. No wonder the Bible tells us to daily study the Scripture. Because if there is nothing new to study, to find out, then there is no need to study the Scripture. Alright guys, Jesus is coming soon. And all your sufferings will end just like the 153 fishes that were caught that parallels the rapture verse of 1 Thessalonians 5.3. Hallelujah.